Welcome to this first session, Marriage Matters. It's important for us to remember that when it comes to the topic of marriage, marriage isn't to be viewed as some fad. It didn't come as a result of tradition. It wasn't an invention of the church, nor is it something that's to simply be reserved for those who are conservative Christians. Marriage instead has come as a result of divine design and definition. Because this is true, this is why marriage is to be held in honour among all, according to Hebrews 13 and verse 14. Now, in order to have a clear understanding of marriage, we need to go back to the Word of God, particularly in the foundational chapters of the Bible, Genesis 1 and 2, and there we learn about the very first marriage in history. Now, as we go back to Genesis chapter 1 and 2, we need to be reminded again that marriage came into existence as a result of God's intention. Marriage was His idea. It was given for the good of humanity and also to the glory of his name. Later on in this series, we're going to learn that marriage is ultimately a picture of an even greater relationship, and that is between Christ and his church. But before we get there, let's begin with two things in this first session. I want us, first of all, to understand the blueprint of marriage, and then secondly, the blessings of marriage. Now, let's just note that second point, the blessings, will be elaborated with more detail in our second session. But I do want to cover these two headings in this introduction. So first of all, let's talk about the blueprint of marriage. In the opening chapters of the book of Genesis 1 and 2, we learn that on the sixth day, God created Adam, the very first human being, God's representative on earth, this man was made in the image of God. And as an image bearer of God, he was to have dominion over the earth. He was to spread the fame of God's glory across the lands. This man was given the responsibility by God to display this dominion as he named the animals. Here they came to him, and Adam displayed that authority, named those animals. But as he went about this particular process, Adam discovered that there was not a helper fit for him in all of creation. His life was incomplete. If he was to carry out this task of having dominion, he needed a helper. He needed someone to be alongside him in this endeavor. God, we learn, put Adam to sleep. And in a miraculous way, in a way that only God can do, from the side of Adam came the very first woman. As Adam awoke from sleep, we see the very first marriage take place in all of history. Can you imagine how spectacular this particular moment was? There is Adam seeing for the first time a woman. This woman is presented to him as his bride. Adam would have been stunned by the sight that he saw. He was able to behold her beauty. But notice what we see in this particular moment. We have a man and a woman presented to each other. It is God the Father who actually hands this woman over to Adam for this very first wedding. And in Genesis 2 and verse 24, we have the commentary on this as Moses writes these words, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. What we have there in Genesis 2, 24, and from that whole description in those first two chapters is the beautiful blueprint of marriage. Marriage, by divine design and definition, is one man and one woman coming together in covenant union. 
And as they come together in this covenant union, they can partake in the blessings of marriage. That blueprint was not simply relegated to a once-off. I want you to note that this is also affirmed by our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 19. And over in Ephesians 5, the Apostle Paul does the same. And what that teaches us is that this was not a one-off example or practice. This is a blueprint. This is the divine intention for marriage. Regardless of the redefinitions or ideas that society may have with regards to this union, what God says stands. He is the one who invented marriage. He's the one who made it for the benefit and for the flourishing of humanity and ultimately for his glory. So we learn in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 about the beautiful blueprint of marriage. But I want to share with you for a few moments the blessings that come from marriage. These blessings are built into this blessed union. And God in his kindness desires that the couple that come together as husband and wife would not only experience the fact of that blueprint, but they would also experience the fruit of that blueprint. And that fruit is what I like to call the blessings or the benefits of marriage. What are these blessings? Well, we could simply put the blessings into three categories. First of all, they are going to be spiritual blessings. Secondly, social blessings. And thirdly, sexual blessings. But let me give you the specific blessings that I have in mind. And in our next study, we're going to elaborate on each of these with more detail. The first blessing is the blessing of pleasure. When God had joined Adam and Eve together as husband and wife, it was his intention that they would enjoy the pleasure of sexual relations in the confines of marriage. Now, I understand that our culture has perverted the topic of sex, but sex is actually a gift from God. It is what God has designed to be a part of the marital union, and a part of the experience of sex is pleasure. Now, we'll also learn that another benefit is procreation in just a moment. But the experience of pleasure in the confines of marriage is a blessing that God sanctions, a blessing that God approves, and it is something that God has built into this blessed union. Another blessing that God provides and builds into the nature of marriage is not only pleasure, but also procreation. This was the divine intention. The Lord had declared in Genesis 1 and verse 28, be fruitful and multiply. As a result of coming together in marriage, there would be the opportunity for this husband and wife to be able to have children. Now, of course, we are living in a fallen world. And as a result of being in a fallen world, there will often be complications with reference to conception and procreation. But where possible, this is to be one of the blessings that come as a result of marriage. A third blessing is partnership. The husband and wife are now together as one. They were once two individuals, but these two individuals are now no longer independent of one another. They are joined together as partners in an enterprise for the glory of God. Together, they can live life. Together, they can worship God. Together, they can be a blessing. And that brings me to the fourth blessing of marriage, and that is productivity. As a result of this couple being together, as they are protect, uh, partnering together in this enterprise, they are now able to achieve things 
for God's glory. The two together are able to magnify the great name of the Lord in their homes, in their workplaces, in the station of life that God has called them. Now, all of this ultimately results in the greatest blessing, and that is marriage is a picture, a picture of Christ and his church. We're going to learn more about that great mystery later on in this series. But for now, I want you to see in this introductory message on marriage matters, that marriage has significance and dignity, not because it is something that results from tradition, not because it's something that Christians do or others do in their religious circles. Marriage matters because marriage has come as the result of God's design and God's definition. And that is why we take seriously the words of Hebrews 13 and verse 14. Let marriage be held in honour among all. We ought to prize marriage. We ought to value it. We ought to celebrate marriage. Let us not be disheartened by the distortions that the world will often call marriage. The world's ideas when it comes to this are not marriage, but they're simply a mirage. True marriage is defined by the word of God. God is the creator and he is the one who established it. And because God established marriage, it is his right to define it. And we are to embrace the divine design of marriage. I trust that the blueprint that we've discussed in this introduction and the blessings briefly have been of a great benefit to you. As we embark on this series together, Marriage Matters, I really hope that you will be greatly blessed. And as our marriages are lived in accordance to the word of God, may God receive the glory And may you and your spouse receive the good and the blessings that God would have you enjoy. May he protect you and may he strengthen you and may your marriage flourish to the glory of God.